in the dark, dark tune, there was a dark, dark street. And in the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark office. In the dark, dark office, there were some dark, dark stairs. And down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room was where the worst wrestling tropes go to die. <laughs> Welcome to some. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty... Every single you. time I hear the beer can't open, and that yeah. is what I've imagined in my head now. <laughs> Let's begin this. Anyway, hello, I'm Ross from Cultaholic.com, and welcome to Straight to Hell, the show of my illustrious guests. Offers up a list of pet peeves from the world of professional wrestling because then I'm, I'm a gatekeeper who's had a beer, so I'm going to slur a bit in this episode, so get over it, you know? This Joining is, me today. This is not Room 101. Do you know Room 101? No, but I've heard you reference it, and I, I surmise that it's a BBC series. So it started on the radio in the 80s, I believe. Wow. Um, and it's just a, it was a crap radio. Well, no, it was a good radio show, because it got turned into a TV show. And then got turned into a different TV show. Then that TV show got cancelled soon after I started doing Straight to Hell. So I don't want to say I was responsible for the TV show being cancelled. Oh, but I yeah. was responsible for the TV show they being cancelled. They did the job for you, man. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I took down the BBC. Essentially, <laughs> I love I love the beat. You know, I used to live in your home country when I, never I was a knew little this. kid. My dad was in the Air Force, and we and we lived in Bedfordshire on an Air Force posh, base. Very posh. Is it? Is, it, is that very posh? Bedfordshire, I think so. Okay. I was going to go to uni there if I didn't like do so well in my oh. uh, thing, but I did just well enough to go to a, a slightly better place. We were on a little Air Force base just outside of a little town called Shefford. Never and heard of it. It was not surprising. It was really small. <laughs> It was lovely. I loved it. I am an Anglophile. I didn't know an Anglophile was a thing. I think I might have made that up. We'll take it though. Somebody who is into the UK scene. <laughs> Do you like the royal family? I've got to ask it. You're no, American. my wife loves them, mm. and I hate Doctor Who. But everything else, <laughs> I love. I, I'm not a fan of Doctor Who, to be honest. I bet Sam behind the camera loves it. Uh, uh, really? Uh, I used to watch Neighbors when I was a kid. I know that's Australian, but it was a big deal on your TV. Yeah, it's on yeah. Tea Time TV. Yeah. Home and Away, Neighbors, Yeah. Paul O'Grady Show. <laughs> and he put The Simpsons on, and it all goes downhill from there. And then I watched, recently I watched the biggest quiz show. What's it called? The Big Quiz Show? The Big Fat Quiz of the Year. With the, the goth guys. The goth guys. Brand and uh, uh, Russell Brand and the other guy. No Fielding. Yes. Yes. The big oh. fat quiz of the year. The one at oh. the end of the year. Oh. That's a good quiz to finish the year off like. I love it. Anyway, we're here with Steve from Steve and Larson going in raw. We have just done a show a few hours ago, which I thought went very well. Oh, I, that was great. No, no, from our point of view, I was surprised it went well because it was just put together at the last moment. That was great. It was lovely. Yourself and Mr. Larson are very good talkers. So I'm very yeah. thankful for your input in that segment. Definitely something we do. Do we want do. to reference that now? Just spoil it? I don't know if we're going to upload it. Should we just spoil it? So we did three specialist rounds, didn't we? I made sure that, uh, yeah. I made, yeah, I lost one to three yeah. to my partner, to Larson. I, I'm used to putting him over, though. That's not something that I'm. That's new to me. <laughs> I, I put him over. I'm a very selfless worker, and he's a very selfish worker. You're a credit to the business. I try. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I try to be. So what did you pick for wrestling move? Because my memory doesn't work very well. Rainmaker. Okay. Oh God, that was a cut. The room didn't like that one. No, they didn't. I, they're not ready for my ideas, man. <laughs> That's the problem. It did make sense in the sense of like he does the jumping tombstone. So why the hell's that not above? He does the, the rain, jumping man. tombstone. He's got the best jump kick uh, or drop kick in the business, rather. And uh, and then he comes up behind a guy, he hugs them, <laughs> he touches their wrist caressingly. He does a ballet spin, and then he does like a weak clothesline. I think it's silly that that's like a super over move. We'll see what the comment section thinks of that. Because oh, the they're room, gonna, they're gonna rip me. And the that's Tuscany okay. Suites did not like it. What else did we do? What was the second category? Uh, match. Match, yes. What match do you want to see go to hell? I said Bret Hart versus Tom McGee. I said, because I'm not sure I'm huge on uh, the concept that a terrific wrestler can bring a sack of potatoes with a mullet to a five-star <laughs> match. And then when you watch the match, it's really not all that great. People just hype it up because it was this lost match, and all of a sudden they find it, and they're like, oh my god, this is great, and it kind of just isn't. I, th I think that might be the first time he's been called a sack of potatoes in his life, though. Did you see him Tom back McGee? in the day? Yeah. 
Well, metaphorically speaking. He was speaking, gorgeous. He was, yeah, no, he was jacked and he had a wonderful curly head of hair. But like, have, if, I've, I've actually seen the, the dud match that he put on that was like worst match of the year, like 1986 or something. And it's just the dude, he's not, he's, he was, and in the die in the WWE documentary they did, mm. they just danced around that he was trash. Yeah. Like, I still haven't seen that. Is it good? It's, you no, know, it is, it's good, but it's not really honest because they didn't really just out and out say, Bret Hart brought a crap wrestler to a fantastic match. They never said that. They just sort of danced around the Tom McGee thing, how he just was not a very good pro wrestler. He couldn't do the most basic things that everybody could do. Yeah. Could you imagine Vince McMahon liking somebody like that? When's that? Yes, ever I before? can. I know exactly. <laughs> and then we did. What was the final did. round again? We just did uh, wrestler. We did wrestler. And yo, you were arse backwards here. I'm sorry. You were our only beacon of hope in this world when it comes to WWE, and you wanted to put him to hell. Triple H, you wanted to send to hell everybody. Unbelievable. So he's given us maybe literally the best wrestling show NXT maybe in the history of the business. He's the most <laughs> manipulative, cerebral assassin the game, <laughs> and he can't figure out how to manipulate a 73-year-old man, Vince McMahon. He's married to the dude's daughter, which is like the ultimate leverage, and he can't figure out how to manipulate this guy. <laughs> you can go to hell for that one, Triple H. <laughs> and he was my favorite. I loved him when I was in college, and he was like, you know, doing his reign of terror. It was amazing. I was yeah. like, oh, bury him, bury him. I'll oh, be racist against Booker T, bury him. No, I didn't think that was cool. <laughs> didn't think that I was, was cool. Say. But everything else was amazing. I decided we're lost on that one strongly. We need to get behind Triple H, rally around him, help him take down Vince McMahon. Again, Ross, my ideas are not really made for everybody. <laughs> They're very forward thinking. Maybe I'll, I'll bring them to the UK one day. <laughs> when I transplant there permanently. And then we'll do change the universe, will you? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I have big lofty goals, man. <laughs> and then we did, finally, we did Angle. Not I Kurt, went, I went with the Angle. bummer one. That's Larson went with kind of an easy one. I went with a bummer one, Brett's return in 2010. You know, I, it, was, it was like borderline hypocritical. He was really into it. He was happy to do it, but it was just a bit on the sad side. It was just kind of pathetic, like one of the best technical wrestlers of all time comes back and can't really actually wrestle and they give him the US title. They give him a win against Vince, who again is super old, who cares? And it's like a really long, weird match. I mean, it is a, a good choice, but you that know. That could go to hell, right? It, it, can, it can go to hell, but just not as hard as what Larson picked, which we'll reveal when Larson does straight to hell no. very soon indeed. Goodness gracious. But I, I think you'll be able to see that on the Cultaholic channel very soon. I'm not too sure though. You might be able to, but I'm not too sure. I reached out to the one person. I, I kind of, part of me wanted that event because I thought it was so good to be its own Brett versus Tom <laughs> McGee event where no, people will talk about it. We'll leave it unlisted for 20 years. Yes. And in 20 years, we'll just unlist it and then you'll see it there. Have you gotten in touch with the person who might We have... said at the end, he said we could have it, but I okay. don't know what that means, so right. we'll see what happens. I told him, I said, share me on that link. Like, put it up on G Drive, share me on the link. I just want it. I want a copy of it. <laughs> And then if you want it, you can have it if he's cool with it. If not, then it's going to be my own Bret Hart, Tom McGee. Just dig a hole, put it in. There you go. But that's not why we're here right now. We're here for Steve's individual straight to hell, where he's just going to pick five random things off the top of your head. I think you're going to like these. I better do. I think you're I like you're like a very these. devilish man, I've come to realize today. A devilish a man? dark side to you. Well, that's definitely true. <laughs> All right, let's see here. How many beers did you have before you arrived in this room today? More than I've had in the past 12 months. <laughs> this is going to go well, so let's get cracking with All the right. knocking. All right, and Steve, your first offering, please. All right, this one I think everybody can agree on. This one is easy. Softball. Saudi Arabia dream matches. <laughs> These Any are... particular reason that one's come to mind, like right now? Well, maybe a match that we're not going to watch because instead we do charity live streams when we when we do gaming stuff. We don't watch these shows, but there. But I, I do catch a lot of clips from them. The Saudi Arabia dream matches. The Saudi Arabian government. They think that we're living 30 years ago, and they put together these matches. This time we've got Undertaker <laughs> versus Bill Goldberg. I can't wait, me. I can't wait. You know when you, you see a, a horrible, horrible car crash on a motorway and you're just driving past to the side? 
you're thinking you shouldn't it's look because there's not, blood everywhere. That's so dark, man. Yeah, you just want to go, oh, look at the bone sticking out of the guy's shoulder and whatnot. Oh, it's like that sort of intrigue. See that. I can't wait. I can't, it can't be anything but two minutes of like one spear, one tombstone, a jackhammer, and that'll be it. It you can't know, be anything other than that. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's legacy destroying. That's what it is. It it's, is. it's tearing down the legacy of these wrestlers. You had, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to get Shawn. I mean, I'm sure Shawn Michaels is into it because of the money. Uh, it's, they're all into it for the money. I get that. You want an extra parcel of land. <laughs> you want an extra car. You, you got kids all of a sudden. You want them to go to good colleges. I get that. You want to bribe your way into good colleges. I understand. <laughs> That's how you do it these days. But first we had... The very first one, if you recall, was Triple H versus Undertaker mm -hmm. l one last time. Yeah. What does the what does the term end of an era mean like back at WrestleMania 28? The last time we see these two old sacks of leather go at it in the ring. And then like 15 years later, 10 or whatever, 10 years later it was, we get to see them go again when barely they they can even barely move. Triple H's tit fell off, for want of a better phrase. Yeah, and there was that grotesque Instagram photo he did, and yeah. it was like all. It's just it's like it's so disgusting. And then the next one is that tag match, which was just brutal to watch. Who was it? Like Undertaker almost fell on his head again, or something like that. Kane wasn't at the races. Kane's mask fell off somehow. I've never seen that before in a match. Yeah, how does that? Even <laughs> I don't happen? even know. Like, he's done the proper thing. He's moved on to become mm. a mayor in uh, in Knox County. It's still in his system, though. Did you see that press conference he did? Oh, he loves it. Oh, God, I, I'll cringe so bad. He's he's like 40% actual king. <laughs> he really is. It was so cringy, though. When the lights went and then some random guy walked on, he chokeslammed him through the table. If I was oh, there, no. I'd pop, though. I'm not for that. I'd pop so Get hard. a grip, man, will you, Glenn? <laughs> see, that, that I don't want to. That goes to heaven for me. <laughs> Because if I'm sitting at some boring local government meeting, <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to see some theatrics. <laughs> I want to see the I want to see the big red machine. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Um, but so we had the, we had the tag match with Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, the guy who said he would never wrestle again, who kept to that. He kept to it after two mind blowing matches against the Undertaker ten years ago. Mm. He actually held. Unlike Foley, unlike Flair, unlike everybody else who went to TNA or wherever else to get to squeeze a little bit more out of their bodies, he kept to it. And then he gets some time in NXT and they give him a giant paycheck and he wheels his carcass out there. And mind you, for his age, he's in terrific shape. The moonsault was impressive. Yeah. It missed everybody, but it was impressive all well, the same. Yeah. <laughs> No oh, man. He regretted it though, Michaels did. He just like, they did an interview straight away backstage with him. And they're like, oh, well, would you do it again or something? No, never again. No. Oh, let straight me make away. sure the check cashed. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Get out of here. Yes, you would. I completely understand where you're coming from though. It's sad, isn't it? And Undertaker especially, there's like, do you see that interview from like 2002 maybe? Where he says like, uh, the interview goes, oh, when are you going to retire? Because you've had injuries recently and whatnot. He's like, I don't want to be that guy where the son sat next to the dad. And the dad goes to the son. I used to watch that man when he was good. Yeah. Oh, we've gone through that now. <laughs> Dude, so many, so many wrestlers say that, and every single one of them, they're that guy. Yeah. The only, like, to his credit, the only guy who really hasn't come back was Stone Cold. Stone Cold, yeah. He's kept to it, but I guarantee you, the thought has crossed his mind. That thought has crossed his mind. If, if. When Stone Cold had uh, Paul Heyman on his podcast, and he started cutting that promo about a Texas death match with Brock Lesnar, <laughs> if the Saudi government was around uh, and, and mixed up in the WWE at the time, that match would have happened. Yeah. I think they would have doled out so much money. He would have been like, what? I can't turn that money down, you mealy mouse son of a bitch. <laughs> That would have happened. I think it would have been a good match as well. He still looks proper in shape, the Steve. Yeah, he looks really good. Yeah. I, I would be cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I the, the intrigue is there for me. But again, it is soul destroying when you're watching these lads who you've. These lads. These, well, yeah, <laughs> I know the lads who went to school yeah. with them all. No, yeah. these superstars that you've grown up watching, watching them now just flop around the ring like they don't know what they're doing. It's just heartbreaking to see, it's, isn't it? It's not great, man. It's not good. And, it's, and, and on top of that, 
where it's coming from is an extra layer. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I know Foley tweeted this out. He said, every man has his price. If I was offered the proper amount of money, even I would do it. And it's like, man, sometimes it ain't worth it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you guys are doing fine. You guys have a lot of land, <laughs> you know. Just sell the land? Yeah, sell the, exactly. <laughs> land is worth a lot of money these days. I'll take your word for it. So, that's what I'm going to say, Ross. I'm going to send it straight to hell. Oh, I love it, it is bad. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to... You can't begrudge the lads for getting a payday. But, like, you know, have a bit of self-respect. Oh, yeah. And especially take his comment from, like, 2002. That, oh, every time I see him wrestle now, that just goes through my mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, you arsehole. Yeah. Just call the Undertaker an arsehole. Oh, well. Let's <laughs> carry on with straight to hell. <laughs> It's a shock and horror on Straight to Hell. We're one for one. That's never happened before, Steve, you know? I'm very happy about that, Ross. Such a I'm glad I feel more British now. <laughs> Is there anything we could do right now to make you feel even more British? Do you want to, yes. I don't know, spark up a tab in this room and wear a hat? Uh, do you have like an, a spare aero bar laying around? And, uh, is that not American as well? No! Aero. We don't have that here. It's my favorite chocolate bar. Is it? You kind of beat an aero bar. You got to admit, it's kind of weird that they put they have like an orange flavored aero bar. It's orange and chocolate. Mm. That That's a, that's not an American thing. Like, we don't do that. Do you have Terry's chocolate orange either? That doesn't sound familiar enough. Oh, that's a Christmas delight. That's a, that's a stocking filler. We have what? We, orange flavored chocolate American. <laughs> not... not it's shaped like an orange. So Terry's chocolate orange. I'm so, dude. Yeah. yeah. Not, okay, hold on. Wait. So he likes to be he likes to be counter to me. I don't like chocolate yet. I'm aware of it. Okay. Here. Okay, that's a recent thing. Number one. <laughs> number two. It's not okay. Would you put that on the level of a Snickers or a Milky Way? That's not the. That's not the point you're making. <laughs> they. <laughs> The point you're making is that we don't have orange flavored chocolate here, and we do. We have Aero Bars here at the import store. That's not the point. The point is they're not a thing here. Give me a second. He just likes to be, he likes to be <laughs> counter. He's like, oh, Steve doesn't know what he's talking That's about. Correct. Would no, you like, he likes to be, he likes to be counter. Would you like to send Larson to hell? <laughs> oh my God, you have no idea. <laughs> I've been trying that for ages. <laughs> but I need him. <laughs> if you need him. Oh, it's annoying. Now, my second thing that I'm sending to hell. <laughs> Is oh WWE merchandise. Oh my god. Why can What's they happened? not hire? I don't know who did this Finn Balor bootleg shirt, but it looks really cool. Why don't they do stuff like this? Yeah. No, Why you just the, the, the formula to a classic shirt is just pick a font and then write the words. That's yeah. all you need. You don't yeah. need anything else. And then stick a bit something. It's the bit on the back that gets me. I don't oh, want yeah. stuff on the back of my shirt. I'm not a huge fan of that either. I think that's a that's a big problem too. Uh, but just the general design aesthetic. Like there are some people there, like whoever had done the majority of Bray Wyatt's merchandise, it was very underrated. Mm. None of it was really iconic, uh, but it was very well done. Mm. Uh, they could be printing, when they brought, I mean, this is a whole nother thing, but when they had AJ Styles, Gals and Anderson and Finn Balor all under the same roof. And they didn't do some really cool, like bring in some awesome graphic designer and come up with some awesome name for them that wasn't Bullet Club, but was basically Bullet Club. They could have sold so many shirts. Do something like this. They could have sold so many shirts. People would have been eating those shirts yeah. up. And yet, I remember there was, there was that there was that one that uh, Pac, that Neville, when he was still with the company. Oh, king of the cruiserweights. And he literally <laughs> tweeted out and said, what's this crap? <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Like, yeah. Pete Dunne, on his own big cartel shop, which I'm not even sure he has anymore, or he's allowed to have anymore, he's got this amazing stuff that he gets on his shirts. And then when he goes to WWE, they have this, it's like the Solarize font, I, or uh, filter. I'm not sure how many nerds are out there who know like what the solarized filter is, but it's a, it's in Photoshop and it just makes everything look cheesy. And that's what they use for it. It's terrible. Yeah. It's it's so bad. And that's just time after time after time they give people these lame uh, 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 logos and lame fonts. And on top of that, their shirts feel like it's cardboard, like they're the thickest, <laughs> worst material possible. And it's like, 
just this past uh, uh, quarter, like the conference call or whatever, the, the shareholder call. Oh, it's all down, isn't it? Big it's time. like 21% down. Yeah. It's like, well, when you offer trash, nobody wants to buy it. I don't understand why. Why did it change? Because Austin always talks about how he, the skull design for him came about. Because like, he asked The Undertaker, oh, do you mind if I do a skull? Taker was like, no, it's fine. Go and do it. Why don't they allow the superstars to pick like they used to? Do back you in the day? think? Do you think that Vince McMahon is such a micromanager that he even micromanages the merchandise? Yes. It's possible. Yes. It's plausible. It's probably true. Maybe that's why it's so basic, so he can understand. That because there was be. rumors he was going blind, wasn't there, a couple of years ago? Oh, I didn't Remember? hear those. It was, I think, it was. Have Wrestle... you heard those before? You see, at WrestleMania 31, there was that little video where he was sort of going like that. There was Brock Lesnar was going, "He's blind. Look at him. He's blind." Oh my God. I don't think it's true, but yeah. it might be slightly true. So he has to read the King of the Cruiserweights. Oh, that must be Neville's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that could be. Yeah. I just I don't. Because how many T-shirts must Stone Cold have sold like in 1998 when he brought in the, the skull and crossbow? Ungodly yeah. amounts. Why would you then see those results and then go, oh, we won't ask the talent. We'll just stick it, a, you know, a fancy font on there. Yeah. And then we'll sell less. I don't know. Don't like, know. you can at literally, half the designers on pro wrestling tees are better than WWE designers. Why don't you outsource that stuff? Hmm. Why don't you go and freelance that stuff? I don't get it. You can have some really cool stuff. You could be cutting edge in so many different ways. You're like, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. WWE merchandise is trash. And, uh, and the independent scene, that's where the good merchandise, even the bootleg scene is like where the good merchandise is. Red bubble, that's even better. <laughs> Red, well, <laughs> in places. mixed results there. It's interesting you, uh, you mentioned outsourcing though, because I know for, you know, when the championship appears on screen before a big title match, that's outsourced. So they do outsource some stuff. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so I right. wonder why they just don't, wonder why they pick and choose certain things. I wonder if because championship titles are such a rare, it's not like that often they make them. Yeah. And merchandise is like move, move, move. So they have their own little design team. Mm. But I mean, beyond that, I don't like, well, who is looking at these portfolios saying, oh, this guy is great. He <laughs> likes the Comic Sans font. <laughs> that's, the, that's coming soon. Yeah, surely. That's yeah. that's the oh, best yeah. resistance. Dude, no, of this they did it. It was uh, it was. God, Lord, do you remember that it Comic was, Sans? It was a comic. It was. I swear, it was like a Comic Sans font, and they were doing like um, maybe it was like a TLC thing, where it was like like little stick figure uh, ladders. Oh my God! Yeah, the WrestleMania shit. Y yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where they had like all the the famous like sort of was it Razor on the ladder and. Like different famous scenes yeah, from us. something like that. Uh, they did do it as well, and didn't they? I swear they? it was it was at least something that approximated Comic Sans. <laughs> yes, it was Comic Sans. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, we've they seen did we've it. seen it. We've seen wrestling t-shirt Nirvana already. <laughs> they went there. Oh, I mean, I, I've got no nothing to say here. It's going to hell. Sort your sort everything out. Just scrap the whole team. Bring in a new one. Take it out. I'll oh, tell you. Yeah, I've had a beer, me. So we're two for two. Steve, what is your third offering, please? Uh, I am gonna go with this. I know this is another slam dunk. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. WWE versus All Elite Wrestling fandom, where one side has to say, All Elite is the savior and WWE is trash, and then the other side says, no, WWE is the best thing ever, All Elite Wrestling is nothing but a crappy t-shirt company. They're never gonna be anything. What is the point of that? I'm gonna go on record and say I like both of them. I'm going to go on record and say, if you don't like one, why don't you just shut the hell up and not watch it? Yeah. But I think that if, and we've seen this a million times from the cooler heads out there in wrestling. I know Lance Storm tweeted this out and it should be common knowledge. It should be common knowledge. The best time in wrestling was when there was competition and you should be rooting <clears throat> for both companies to succeed because then there will be more leverage for more wrestlers. The the creative juices will start flowing, and it's just it's better for everybody. I don't I do not understand why tribalism is invading the wrestling fandom because of all elite wrestling's presence now in the North American market. I I don't get it. Not everything has to be. You know, it's 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 what I like, and you're what you like is crap. It could be. What I like is great, and if you like that over there, good on you. Yeah, I guess it's more symptomatic of pro wrestling fans in general, anyway. Because it's not just in terms of liking companies; it's like a different styles of wrestling, yeah. different superstars. I don't understand why 
people have to go, no, you're wrong for liking that. What do they get out of that? I don't understand what, what the trade-off is there. I don't get it, man. I mean, I think that... I hate saying this. I, I'm a big fan of Jim Cornette. Mm -hmm. I think he's great. There's a part... Let me ask you this. I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on this. Jim Cornette on Twitter, uh, is that a work? When he goes off on guys like Joey Ryan saying, oh, you're ruining the business, this and that. Is that is that it's... him just playing a character and actually... Because here's the thing. He gives the independent scene so much exposure mm. by doing that. It's almost as if he's kind of promoting the independent scene. Uh, Isn't he involved in MLW now? Is that still a yes, thing? Yes, he is. Yeah, Maybe he is. that's why. That could be. Maybe it's a little little back kind of thing. I think it started out. I think he's he is a very traditional. Tradi oh sure, yeah, I have no doubt. Yeah, but I think it has. The, it's just become a meme, hasn't it? Like kind of, things. yeah. Everybody wants to know what is it, what, yeah, when yeah. something happens with the Priscilla Kelly tampon spot. Ooh, what's Jim Cornette gonna say? And then he says something about it. And but I th I do think that that kind of attitude amongst some influential people in the wrestling business does kind of lend credibility to the tribalism aspect of things. It's like, oh, well, yeah, no, he's saying, and, and, and he's been, you know, he's, he's, he's a very well-respected veteran of the industry, and he's got a strong voice in a podcast and all this. And so, you know, yeah, no, that stuff is crap. And then the traditional stuff is, is great. Maybe that's an aspect of it. I don't know. I don't, maybe it's just we're living in a culture now where, you know, because of social media and the bubbles that people are in and stuff, you know, they're, they're more defensive about what they like for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. I think people just need to chill out. I'm sorry. You'll have one. Okay. No more. All right. All right. <laughs> we, were, we were listening to this show on the way uh, to lot to, uh, to... Did you pick the Jimmy Vegas. Havoc one? No. <laughs> Good we God. We didn't. Every third word. He was going oh, for it. No. I couldn't say, oh, Jimmy, would you mind be quiet, please? Because he would just... Whap out an axe. Who edited that one? I think it might have been him down there. Was it you? Uh, I think it was Richard. Was it Richard? Poor, Poor oh, Richard, yeah. No. Every third word it was. Oh, that's so sad. But what can you say when it's Jimmy Havoc and he I sat know. there with, you know, he had a glass bottle in his hand? Oh, yeah. I gave oh, him a glass well, bottle. Yeah. What was I thinking? That's not a, yeah, <laughs> plastic. plastic. Yeah, that's Every, what I know, I learned. I learned my lesson. So, yeah, man, tribalism in wrestling, it's just not cool. Just let people like what they're going to like. I'm trying to think of a, a like a, an example of when it works. Tribalism in wrestling. Uh, it doesn't really apply, does it? Anywhere. No, it's unless, bad. It's, unless it's like you like this wrestler, you like that wrestler, like in the like in the cave they've said. Yeah, sure. Well, that's just a healthy, you know, I get behind my guy, you get behind your guy. But to want to see, to like, oh, oh they don't do nothing. They're just the, they're just a t-shirt company. Well, a t-shirt company's not going to get a major TV deal. That doesn't happen. So they're obviously more than that. They've got two. They've got, yeah, they've got several, exactly. They're on ITV in the UK. I know. Did like, you watch ITV when you lived in the UK? Probably. Were you a C CITV fan? What shows were on... Got Art Attack? ITV in 1988. <laughs> Art Attack would have been on, surely. Yeah, Rainbow would have probably been coming to an end. Oh, Rainbow. Uh, Zippy, the little thing, uh -oh. the big bear. What was he called, Bumble? Let's find out. Oh, I've got no idea. I don't know. Oh, it's a CBBC child. I, CBB, I, CBBC child me. I know that I because I like I just sort of watched my parents. Said, Do you remember a show called? Oh, what was it? Catchphrase. No. Blue Peter, um. Chuckle Vision, Grange Hill. That's CBBC. That. Yeah. Uh, Thomas and Friends. Well, everybody knows Thomas and Friends. <laughs> That's like great. Even my kid knows. Did you get Thomas. the Ringo Starr version. I did. My kid uh, I has hate like the modern the day one. This, it's, it's oh, it's awful, isn't it? Pierce Brosnan, when my brother was little. Was it? Pierce Brosnan did that? I do not remember that. Yeah. That is weird. I just knew George Thomas Carlin. I can't imagine Ringo. that. George Carlin? No. Pierce? Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. James Bond. When? What year was that? Uh, it must have been like very late 90s, early 2000s. So post Bond? Yeah. Or around, but that's no, sexy that was Bond, that was bond about time. Percy, yeah. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't know that. I thought it'd be after Ruby Steel, he had kind of like a, a down period. Well, his Bond run was mid 90s to early aughts. Yeah. yeah. Well, Good we live in here, we live and learn. <laughs> you know, he's in like a Netflix uh, movie, or it's either Amazon or Netflix, where he plays an American in the South in like the 18, in like the, the Old West. Can't do it. Doesn't work. <laughs> like, the Brits kind of need to stay. Is there a good example of a British actor who can do, like, who's done, like, an old Western in America? Uh, 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 uh. Ian 
Rick Shane. He's great, isn't he? Yeah, but no, he in the first episode they said that he was from derived from British from from he was oh, he has yeah. ancestry they there. Huh? They kayfabed it, yeah. That was, nice. <laughs> that was a good try. That was a good try. But like no, like who who played Magneto? What's his name? Michael Fassbender. The older guy. Oh, Ian McKellen. Yeah, like I don't see him doing like like Patrick Stewart's not doing a western. Yeah, he's got a nice dog, him hasn't he? What's that? Lovely dog, Patrick Stewart. Oh, does he? Have, he's a big dog lover. Yeah, he yeah. adopted one. It's lovely. Oh, what were we talking about for the straight to hell thing? Uh, all Jim the, Cornette, oh, tribalism, 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 tribalism. Can that go to hell? Or yeah, what? I can go straight to hell. Oh, I don't I like. It. Why does it? Apart from the kayfabe sense, it doesn't work anywhere, does it? Like, nothing benefits from it. Can you think of anything, Sam? 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 I've had um, t- I've had two beers today and I'm off up or through. In its nature is very inherently one against the other, and a rising tide carries all boats. So anything that's good for wrestling in general is good for everything involved with wrestling. Wise man, there. It automatically closes minds. I like what he was saying. Yeah, man. What was it? Say all boats. What? All a rising tide will lift all boats. Yeah. The there you go. Yeah. A rising tide will lift all boats. AEW does good. WWE does good. We all prosper. YouTubers in the wrestling community Scott do Martin. good. That was Scott Demore's. Impact. Was it? Yeah, when we spoke to him, that's what he said. He's a scholar, that man. I don't think he invented. I've yeah, heard no. that outside of Scott. <laughs> I've heard that. It's my first exposure, that scene. I'll and it doesn't it. really apply to Impact. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I love. Well, Impact. in 2010, 2010 it did. Into yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it did. Boy, those were hot crowds, weren't they? Yeah. In in back in the day in mm. TNA. So three for three. Nice. Let's make it four for four. Okay, let's do this. So let's try and make it four for four then. Well, why try? We're going to make it four for four. What do you want to send down anyway? All right, this is kind of a silly one, but it's a little bit of a... It's just a bit of a pet peeve of mine that I'd like to see done with in the WWE especially. I hope. I don't know what the AEW TV show is going to look like, but... Old school me. TNA by the looks of Double or Nothing. Why well, sat here the night before Double or Nothing and the stage got leaked? Have you seen it? No, I haven't. The, do you remember the, the uh, TNA tunnels, like either side, where they come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got them. Yeah, yeah, got them yeah. on the go. Oh, okay. I hope they've got smoke and the reverse camera looking up behind them. That'd be them. great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> backstage dialogue segments where character, characters are discussing stuff that really shouldn't be on camera, but it is and we can see it. In the locker rooms. In the locker rooms, yeah, backstage locker room segments. I'm not talking about interviews, and I think for the most part these days, I've noticed WWE has sort of gone more towards interview segments that are then like interrupted by whoever the opponent's gonna be. However, they still, I think from time to time, do these things where somebody's in the locker room, let's say it's AJ Styles, and he's like lacing up his boots, and then let's say Baron Corbin walks in and says, hey, you're not, no, even better, like somebody that AJ is tagging with comes in, and they start discussing strategy or something, and they discuss stuff that they don't, it doesn't make sense for them discussing it while a camera is live right there. This in front does of them. my head in that we have to, like, the superstars have to pretend that the camera's not there. Yes. That segment where they had, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Uso in the hotel room with Naomi and. Uh, Why is there a camera? There was a there? full yes. cat boom pole was in shot, yes. and they're, they're all like standing there, like, not pretend it's not there. That's the worst. Just pretend it's there. Going back to Impact though, they used to do it right. They used to have the, the hidden. We have said that so many times. I used to love them. That 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 fits for what you're talking about right now. Just start doing those. The fly on the wall thing is amazing, and that's what TNA used to do, where it's just sort of like a, a stalkerish camera. Yeah, it's all about back focus there. a little bit and it's yeah. shaky. And it's, it works. I know that works perfect. And on top of that, most of the yeah, those segments they just don't. They're just so cheesy. They're so cringy and so cheesy. They don't work. They don't fit. It's a, it's supposed to be a sports thing. Mm. It just doesn't work. And yeah, you're right. TNA had it exactly right. Uh, and uh, and yeah, the, I could I could do away with this. I'm, replace them with anything else. Replace them with footage from like a ride along or something or whatever that show is called. <laughs> I don't know what, but they're unnatural. They're staged weird. Like they're talking to each other. The way they're like facing each other, the way that they look, they jokingly watch the TV, you know, like the, they watch the see the TV from the side. What, why do you think they do that? 
Why do wrestlers in WWE have to watch the TV at this angle? Uh, like kayfabe or shoot? I just any anything. <sighs> I've, I've tried to work it out and I just can't. I mean, kayfabe, there it's literally in a different universe <laughs> where the scan lines, and they still have scan lines, and so it's not LED, <laughs> are different so that... The field of view of the television. Yeah, right, the field of view of the television is at a weird angle. It's at a weird access. You can only see it clearly from like 45 degrees. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you can literally, it's an, and it's an entirely different universe <laughs> than, the te than the one technologically than we live in. They can see around corners in that universe. Right. <laughs> Who do you think, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Who do you think, well the answer is Vince, but like, when was the first time we do? Does anybody know when the first time? I've got no idea. They did the weird sideways look at the TV was. But even Vince does it himself. He was on SmackDown a few weeks ago, giving it the old lap. Even he's not safe. Yeah. Don't know what it is. Because it's his thing. So of course he's gonna do it. Because yeah. that's Vince's thing. Never do anything that I wouldn't do. <laughs> it's been after 2011. That's when I started watching again, and they didn't do it when I started watching. Again. Really. There was like, they would just be like behind the person's head and you have no, to... No, they didn't have people watching monitors like that. Oh, I think that maybe they did. Well, I think they did. Behind the, behind the TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, that could be. God, I hope so. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's so goofy. It's like you're staging a scene. Maybe it's Kevin Dunn. I don't know who it is. Okay, I want you to stay over here. But no, I mean, going back to the, it's backstage segments with dialogue when it doesn't make any sense for a camera guy to be there. And then the worst, the worst is when they dump out of a segment and the person like walks away and the other person, instead of naturally going back to their business, just sits there. <laughs> like an NPC in GTA 5. <laughs> like, and they're supposed to be thinking that about That expression what is crucial to the story though, when they just go sort of. But it's just like, and they always, they always, they always hold on it far too long. <laughs> like nobody stands there for five seconds. When's the last time Sam said something to you and you stood there and he walks away and you stood there for five seconds? Every single day. Does that happen a lot? Does yeah. that happen a lot? <laughs> Maybe it does. Maybe maybe they're living your reality. I don't know. But that's, yeah, dialogue segments where a cameraman shouldn't be there. That's the, I think that should go straight to hell. I think you're merely at the tip of the iceberg here. I think every single backstage segment, they look the same. The same thing happens every every time. Just replace it with different wrestlers. The whole backstage thing in WWE needs completely changed. Are you a fan of Mustafa Ali's? Yes, that is the one. But it, that's him on his own on Twitter with the I phone. Know. On his it looks so good the way he does it. And he brings them to the WWE and they say, "Wow, this looks pretty good. Let's put this on the TV." Why does every wrestler should be savvy enough with so with with the way like, dude, this is it's on a DSLR. Like you can get a decent lens. They have people, the guy who's doing the Chronicle stuff is like a master cinematographer. Mm. Grab that guy really quick. You know, he's always there to, like capturing footage. Hey, look, can you mind if we could do a promo really quick? I guarantee that's what Mustafa Ali's doing. Or he's doing that with somebody. I think we actually know what it is. Craig Mitchell. Craig Mitchell, thank you. That's odd. Oh, Craig. Yeah, hey, Craig. <laughs> uh, good work. Why isn't everybody, why didn't everybody on the roster look at Mustafa Ali saying, and it's because they're wrestlers. I just think they should be more savvy like him. Like that's the future right there. It's guys who take the, the, the time and they have the motivation and ambition to be like, I don't like how this is done. So I'm just going to do it my way in a really cool way when I know what it is. And then he goes out and does it. Why isn't everybody doing that stuff? You know, but it's gone it's straight to hell. As I said, tip of the iceberg, everything backstage needs change in WWE, including those things in the locker rooms and whatnot. Do what take, just do, just suck it up. Just take the shame. Just, you know, admit that TNA did it better back in the day. Just do it. They don't, do they do it anymore? Do you watch it? TNA? Yeah. I don't because I don't know how. <laughs> it's on a channel that, where, what channel is it on? In uh, I could not tell you. It's coming to channel five soon though. Oh, that's cool. I think it's five star though. Um, Which is like channel uh, five's like, I don't know how, what do Americans have over here? Their sister like, channel. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, here it's on a channel that literally I it's I don't know how many households it's in, but it's not a lot. It's it's on a very very few. It's it's the hunting channel. Pursuit channel. It's the pursuit channel, which is literally just the hunting channel where it's like, "Oh, I get to see this guy shoot ducks out of the sky," which is something I'm not into. And then but uh, while I'm waiting for, you know, impact I love Impact's roster. I love what they're doing. Last time I was watching wasn't that long ago. They were still doing that kind of stuff. It was it it wasn't as the the production value was better back in the day. 
but they were still grabbing some DSLRs and doing stuff like that. So yeah, they were still kind of. Just makes it feel more authentic, doesn't it? That's well, look at how NXT does it. Yeah. NXT, they don't do that. They they they'll like have oh look this video happened to be at the performance center and then some B story will be happening in the background. Stokely Hathaway will have his camera and he'll be like you know world star hip hopping it right you know and then stuff will be happening and it's very organic. We had an Undisputed uh, Era interview, and then all of a sudden, Roderick, you see all these people running towards yeah, where Roderick well, yeah. He shows up with a bloody shoe, and it's great. And it's like, wow, that was actually really cool how they did it. And he want to knock Triple H down. Yeah. You bad man. Well, you know, hard decisions have to be made <laughs> around here. So we're four for four. So we're on the home stretch now. It's going to be five. It's been a fantastic episode. I can't argue back hardly. So what's the fifth one? NXT call-ups. <laughs> when was the last one that worked? Uh, so the funny thing is, it's been kind of a, it's kind of been like a sliding scale. It so I don't, I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm very curious to know what the difference is or what the change was. Remember Finn Balor's call-up? Oh my God! They mm. treated him like a rock star. They drafted him high in the big draft, and he stepped out from amongst a sea of superstars up on the stage on that rebranded episode of Raw and everybody parted and Finn Balor was there and they referenced how great his NXT run was and they basically gifted him the Universal Championship. And now we get Alistair Black comes out and Michael Cole goes, that guy's moody. Oh. He's a moody man. He He's <laughs> moody and he fights for the blue collar workers, the <laughs> outlaws, the outcasts. The guy down in line at uh, Walmart, and uh, the the other guy too, whoever that is. And yeah, it's, it's night and day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it's been like this weird, like they had it really, really good for Kevin Owens. Oh god, yeah. beautiful call up NXT champion shows up with the title, lays out John Cena, stomps on the U.S. title, and raises the NXT banner. That's amazing. Then we get Finn Balor. It's awesome. And then we start entering into some weird territory, like Shinsuke Nakamura gets called up and he's off TV, he's off fight, he doesn't fight for like six weeks until the next pay-per-view and his first opponent is Dolph and it's like, wait a second, this guy was a huge star in NXT, but okay, maybe they're keeping him off fighting because they want his first match to be special and it's against Dolph, who's a good worker, or whatever. And then it just sort of fizzled out and he had his feud with AJ, but he didn't win the world title and it kind of fizzled out. And then he tagged him with Rusev, so and then Oscar. That, that pains me, that tag team. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What? I don't know. That's a different subject from the it's, ter it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. And then you had Asuka, who literally vacated her title because she cleaned out the entire women's division. And they, like, people, for whatever reason, on main roster were, like, lining up to fight her. And it's she, like, she had squash matches at the start, didn't she? Just against nameless people. Not it, on the main roster. Was it not on the main roster? Her first match was against Emma. Was it? Her first two matches were against Emma. Oh. The first one, Emma put up a good fight. The second one, Asuka took care of business pretty quickly. But the first one, Emma won a match in order to fight Asuka. So she's just slightly better than Emma. And Emma, right. yeah. in the kayfabe sense, wasn't very good. Right, yeah. exactly. Good message to send out. And like, yes, they, they actually booked Asuka fairly dominant until her, you know, obviously she, it took her until the wrestle, her WrestleMania match with Charlotte to pick up her first loss. I kind of understand that, but still it wasn't like, oh, this is, people are terrified of Oscar. They should be, you know? And then you get to, and I know Brian Zane referenced this in a previous Straight to Hell, Bobby Roode, oh. the glorious Bobby Roode, who it literally, this poor son of a bitch, it looks like it hurts when he smiles. <laughs> the man is not made to be a good guy, he is not fit to smile. He doesn't understand what a smile is supposed to be. And at that point, when we saw him, I remember, I, I'm pretty sure I texted Larson, oh my God, they made him a good guy. <laughs> and he's smiling and he just has, his soul is dying. Like you can just see it in his eyes. And then the worst, the worst, it was bad enough when they did the McMahon shakeup. They were like, oh, God, let's bring up a bunch of people from NXT. And it was like Nikki Cross, Lars Sullivan, EC3, and Lacey Evans, and Heavy, Heavy Machinery, Machinery yeah. all in one, like, video package. It's like, okay, well, the EC3 video package is kind of funny. Let's see what they do with them. And, of course, they do nothing with them. He was a mute. 
Yeah. He, Did you yeah. see that promo on Raw when he was flexing the mirror and then yeah. they walked away and he just froze? He just stood there for like two minutes. Well, the, what has he done? I, I need to know what he's done. I don't know. I don't know. I, did he crap in a duffel bag? What did he do? On Vince McMahon's face, by the looks of things. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's bizarre. This guy has got, he's literally, he is nothing but charisma incarnate. Mm. And and you're not, and they're not doing anything with yeah. it. It's weird. Uh, and then, but the worst of it, the absolute worst, the worst was Triple H coming out. Here's a slideshow presentation of four of the top NXT competitors are going to be tonight. Why isn't what? Why? <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? But that's how you make people feel like stars. You just put them in the tag team. That makes no sense whatsoever. Oh my god! They've got no real connection. Alistair Black and Ricochet. Oh. What's the connection there? Tell oh. me what the connection was. None. There's <laughs> no connection. DIY. We're in this awesome multi. Oh, that was the worst of all. Multi-layered, time. multi-faceted. Two years just. Pissed down the drain in one gone. night. Yeah, unbelievable. Just gone. Unbelievable. And, they, and neither of those guys knew what to say, and that was obvious. Neither of them knew what to say when they had that backstage interview, and then Thebar came over and and like interrupted them. No, they did not know what to say, and and it's like, do you re- like every call up, every call up? It's so just the call up needs to be done away with. It can't be a call up anymore. It has to be germane to the story. Yeah. It has to be like, and this isn't a good, this isn't a really good example, but everything should be treated. Remember Chris Jericho? Back in the, look, the Attitude Era had its fair share of problems. One thing they did really, really good was new signings. Jericho is obviously the, 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 the epitome of the perfect debut for somebody that they signed over from WCW. It was amazingly done. And the way they would do it is... Every time they would bring somebody over from WCW, they would put them, like Big Show, for example. Let's just take Jericho out of it. Big Show. They debut, they debut them in a main event slot. Even Jericho came out and had a promo with a main event player, The mm-hmm. Rock, right? Debut them in a main event slot. And then the next week, bring them a little bit further down. And then a little bit further down until like the upper mid card of the mid card. Wherever they're going to land... That's where you put them to build them back up and see if they can actually be in the main event. That's how NXT call-ups should be. You make them a star by debuting them in a main event segment, and then if they end up falling down a little bit because of story-like reasons, that's fine. It should always be there to service the story, not, up. Oh, Nothing left to do it's in NXT. April. It's, <laughs> it's April. Oh, day after Mania. Let's just call a bunch of people up and be damned what's going on in NXT. For whatever reason, there is a lack of continuity. And the odd thing is, three years ago, this didn't exist. This lack of continuity between NXT and the main roster, where Kevin Owens was showing up in character, the same guy we just saw in NXT with his NXT championship, stomping on the U.S. title and laying out John Cena. There was continuity there. Why is it things have regressed? I don't know, because they've made more of a deal of NXT being the third brand on the same level as Raw and SmackDown. Right. But then the Viking Raiders happened, or whatever yeah. they put the Viking Experience, sorry. Yeah. That happened. All I that don't happened. understand why. It's not the, the right leg's not joint to the left, is it? It will, but it was before. Yeah. Why is, like, why have things gotten. You would think things. I've got a theory, me. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, do you, are you familiar with Manchester United? I know that it's a football and club. Sir Alex Ferguson. No, I'm so Sir, Alex, me there. Sir Alex Ferguson is like the greatest manager in the history of football, okay. potentially. Won everything okay. twice and thrice. Okay. And then he retired in 2013. His last season, he won the league, but he purposefully built a not quite as good enough squad so the next manager struggled and made him look better than that he was. sounds familiar. I reckon okay. Vince McMahon knows he's not got long left. That felt awful to say, but it, I, think, I think I'm true. I think I'm right here. He's just knocking it down bit by bit and give Triple H like twice as hard a job if as he no, would do. If, if nothing else, you, you could be absolutely right. You <laughs> I could hope be I'm right. Not right. <laughs> there could be, and maybe if it's sort of acting in his subconscious, maybe he doesn't appreciate all the NXT critical praise. Maybe he's like, oh yeah? Well, let's see how. Maybe it's just a direct sort of shot at Triple H. Upstaging him, yeah. For upstaging him. 
That could be. Because it happens every single weekend as an NXT pay-per-view. Yeah, it when, does. When was the last time a main roster pay-per-view did better than a takeover? I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know. But what were we talking about again? What was the thing you said? NXT the call-ups. NXT call-ups, they're gone. Yeah, they're the gone. The camera's belt run off. Make them belt story. Yes. I was just going to say, imagine if Champ had debuted the night after WrestleMania, but it was like Seth Rollins celebrating. Yeah. And then Champa came Boom. in, a bastard. Boom. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a mistake they made there. Yeah. It just came to my mind there. Eh? Alist Alistair Black is made for main roster in a main event, main event role. Yeah. You know, but then put him what, in the What do you make his character now? Uh, I, I'm kind of, I'm... I'm this, confused, man. I might be really stupid about this, but I'm kind of optimistic about him because they're giving him a bunch of really long promos, and I feel like that's just... That's their weird way of building him up into something, like pre, like away from the tag team that he was in, as like a, a solo guy. So maybe they do have something good for him. Yeah, but I hope I so. Know. He's just coming across like a teenager at the minute. A little bit, yeah. Like, you know, a sort of 16-year-old haven't quite found their way in life. I find they're conflicted. All my opponents, and I <laughs> think of them in black terms, and I, <laughs> they will now fade to black. Yeah. That's a good impression, that. Thank you. Thank you. So that's I it. I have lots of homework left to do in the night. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll get done with it before homeroom tomorrow. I don't think they have homeroom anymore. What the hell's homeroom? It was like the zero period before first period. So, shock and horror here on Straight to Hell. I can't believe it's happened again. We're five for five. Oh, man, I love it. What I'm happens so when you have a beer? I'm so happy about that. Just so, I'm just a pushover. I, I get, you know, do the comments, or do they usually, like, you know, People you... say, like, you should only, like, you should say, at the start of the episode, one thing will go to hell. But I just think, like, if somebody gives us four amazing things, how can I argue back and say, oh, I've got to wait until the end? Then pick your best one. Yeah. I just think if you know you make five com compelling arguments, you make five compelling arguments. What I mean, can we're I do? trying to make things better. That's the point of the show, right? And they definitely watch Cultaholic. Yeah. There was a video today on Twitter. I came up with the twenty four seven championship. Did I called it a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, Larson used to. <laughs> he used to call a thing called the network championship, where the network you'd be watching like Chronicle or twenty four. I'm gagging for this idea to come true. And then all of a sudden, it would just cut into. Something happening. It's the t it's the network title. Mm. It would it would be a thing where somebody would change over. Somebody would be fighting for it. Yeah. And then they're doing this, and it's probably going to be like a lamer version of that. But I'm taking credit for Shane McMahon as well. That's all my fault. Me and Pachiti called him best in the world for months, and then Saudi Arabia happened. Couldn't believe it. Haven't got over it. I, but uh... <laughs> And that's the end of Straight to Hell. Steve, thank you very much for doing this. I really like Anything? Shane. I really like Shane McMahon. As a heel, he's an unbelievable heel. He's great, isn't he? He's just doing the same thing he did as a babyface, but now he's a heel. It yeah. all makes sense. I know it's, it's great. amazing. It's anyway, great. do you want to plug things down that camera? Uh, yeah. So youtubecom forward slash Steve and Larson. You can find us on the Twitter at Real Going In Raw, and me on the Twitter at MF Steve Here. That everything? Yeah, that's everything. It's been a hoop. This. Oh, Thank you very much lovely. for doing it. Thank you so much. Pleasure. That's it for this Straight to Hell. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can place us on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.